So I think one of the things I've learned over the years growing up in New York and now living in Florida is that healthcare is local, it's not, it's not national. In New York City, you really have the urban center and you, and you have a lot of challenges of a real condensed population compared to Florida, which is kind of more spread out and you have more of a rural or suburban delivery system. So I think how health plans develop products for the different demographic populations is very important and also very, very key in the future of healthcare. There's a big uh, debate about whether these exchanges will largely look like Medicaid plans that are available because of their lo low cost to a broad part of the population, or they'll be uh, pretty much an electronic marketplace through a kind of clearinghouse where people can efficiently make choices and uh, do selections. The approach states take are going to, to vary quite a bit. There's only a couple state exchanges in place right now and they are very, very different operations. Massachusetts and Utah were set up under different uh, regulations and time periods to achieve different goals. They're good blueprints to start with, but I think customization and uh, creativity is going to be required to create a successful exchange in any given state. The approach that Utah has taken is very much a market-driven, put the choices in the hands of consumers. The connector uh, was established under the 2006 Massachusetts Health Reform Law. The mission was to implement a couple of elements of the reform, which includes Medicaid expansion efforts, which covers a population that was previously sort of left out, uh, that are not covered by state programs, but at the same time, their social economic status does not qualify them economically for the commercial market. Consumerism in healthcare uh, is really an important concept because currently individuals really don't have any visibility to what things cost and the cost differential of choices they make. We want to make the shopping platform as simple as possible so that when a consumer comes in, it's very easy to identify the most value-driven product and members will select the plan that best meets their needs, whether it be a very rich plan if they expect to use a lot of coverage or something that is not very expensive and has uh, not as much coverage for, for conditions. Well, the most challenging aspect is going to be able to maintain that insurable mix of uh, individuals in the insurance program. Critical mass plays a, a key factor in health insurance, premium competitiveness, and that's going to continue post-reform. We're expanding coverage to so many more people. So what's the impact of that going to be? Is it going to increase utilization for those people who have never had coverage before? Uh, is our risk mix going to change because uh, the underwriting changes? In, in the reform marketplace, one of the concerns is this issue of people switching so that they would come in and out of the market and only uh, use their insurance coverage or sign up for insurance coverage when they're going to use the services. That's called adverse selection because people are selecting to choose health insurance based on their health status and it's adverse because it results in higher claim costs. In health insurance it means people with poorer health are more likely to buy health insurance and so the mix of insureds winds up being less healthy than if you bring in everybody including the most healthy lives. The role of risk adjustment in the health exchanges is significant. In the exchanges there'll be multiple plans participating. Some plans will attract sicker patients while others will attract healthier patients. What risk adjustment does is assure that the plans are paid fairly. We apply risk adjustment methodology to allocate our premium across health plans differently. If a health plan is really good at managing sicker population, they need to be compensated for the extra resources that they would need to consume. I think the actuarial skill set is crucial because there's so much rate pressure on health plans these days. There's the minimum loss ratio requirement, which means if you overprice your plan, you're going to have to give money back. There's the rate increase review, which means states are going to be looking very closely at rate increase requests, and so you better have those requests ironclad actuarially sound. 
On the insurance exchange side, it is important that the product portfolio that we offer to our shoppers offer the best value in terms of the breadth of the coverage and the quality of the product. And our actuaries work closely with us to ensure that. Helping our clients develop the information, do the analysis, prepare the prices, develop the products, really helps our clients get what they need. And at the same time, the regulators, both at a state and federal level, you know, respect what Milliman brings to the table. Milliman has a, a long-standing tradition of approaching our work for all of our clients with independence and objectivity. Our projections are not biased towards any particular outcome, but simply provide the facts as we can uh, best determine them and as we can best project the potential outcomes of strategies that might be pursued.